Hey guys, Pizza here. In this video, we will discuss how I optimized my Sarah Allen for PV with utility main ID with only minimal equipment setup. But then again, just adjust anything if you have better item or card options available in your account. With that said, now let's get into it. First for stat allocation, max int for damage, and then luck for magic crit damage. Then allocate the rest of the stats to Vit for more HP and bit of dex for casting time reduction. Take note that I already have meal B here and six pieces original wool juice for magic penetration. For Sarah Allen damage modifiers, boost your magic attack, magic penetration, skill damage increase, magic damage. As for ignore magic death, no need to pry on much because of wish chan, which ignores the enemy's magic death with total downtime of eight seconds. Now back to damage modifiers. Element damage, which is fire, dark, and ghost. And then damage to large size because of her passive skill. Heavenly Justice, which calculates magic damage inflicted to large size monsters. Now for the rune placement. Equip all the red and yellow attribute runes that will boost your damage. As for the rune, you need core level seven for maximum damage output. The only rune you need with high first line is Maple by Flame Rune because that is the only skill that we will use most of the time. As for the Arcane Rune, White Blade Rune will increase our damage. And then War of Preparedness for the Convert of Damage to HP Shield. As for the Bloody Rune, I just equipped this because there is HP loss for burn. But you can also replace it with Transmission Arcane Rune because the max range of Maple by Flame is 7 meters. By the way, before we proceed, here is my handbook depot. Now let's head on to the instance runs. For Lost Isle Legend First Floor, before attacking the MVP, consume Fire Controlling Alloy to increase our fire damage, and don't forget to use Wish Chant first for the ignore magic death. As for my extra headgear, it's equipped with Dark Illusion Star Card to reduce the fixed casting time of Sudden Farewell, which procs manipulate nature every two seconds. After casting it, quickly switch back to crit headgear, because we can't burst it down with only Maple by Flame, since the element of the MVP is fire, so we will need the other elements of Sarah to finish this floor. Butterfly Ripple is a dark element, and then Manipulate Nature, and Sudden Farewell is a ghost element. As for the second floor, it's easy, just burst the MVP with Maple by Flame. For the third floor, I switched to five pieces of original wool juice and, and one piece of original wool barbecue for the anti-fatal. And then just spam Maple by Flame again to burst the MVP. The third floor is a bit easy too because Sarah's skill is spammable and has a wide skill range. You just need to kite from time to time to avoid getting hit by the torrent. Now for Ponope Museum Legend first floor, I use five pieces original wool juice and one piece original wool barbecue for the anti-fatal to avoid dying from C if ever it applied. Then just spam with Maple by Flame to fast kill the MVP. Remember to switch the target to Baby Dragons if ever it spawns so you can burst it down. As for the second floor, same foods and items. Before starting, always remember to cast Wish Chant for the ignore magic death, and then lure the MVP away from the rooks to avoid casting time debuffs. Then again, just burst the MVP with Maple by Flame.
For the third floor, I switch footgear card to Fallen Bishop card for 15% damage to Demi Human. And then, replenish your foods to make sure you have anti-fatal buff. And double check if you still have meal B. Use fire controlling alloy for maximum damage output. My first target is always Pakarani, so she won't be able to heal the other MVPs. As for Camora, if she is under White Barrier, you can use Manipulate Nature or Sudden Farewell because it's Ghost Element. Remember to always keep your distance away from Nuka, so you won't get Disarm debuff. In case of Disarm, you can still use Sudden Farewell to deal damage. As you can see here, you can still use it even under Disarm debuff. For Ponope's Secret Realm, it's a bit hard since the instants have whole screen AoE with massive damage, so I used HP Block Relic. However, there is a trick for the whole screen AoE. You can switch to Dark Talisman for a 63% chance to evade attacks. Or you can time using Play Dead to dodge the whole screen AoE damage. Or you can also just use Agrio Card to avoid getting one hit by the orbs or the whole screen AoE. Just switch between Fire and Dark Talisman if ever your HP gets low. Then to fast kill the crystals, use Manipulate Nature and Butterfly Ripple for extra DPS. We'll just skip this until the end because it took me 20 minutes to finish the instance. Plus it's always better and faster to do with party anyways. For Echoing Corridor, buy out these items and you are good to go. By the way, avoid buying Magic Barrage so the mobs will not get stunned for pouring affix so that you will get their aggro and clear them faster. And I think that's all for the video, guys. If you have questions or suggestions, just comment it down below so we can test it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you for watching and see you again in the next one.